On my how to install Windows XP video, WX Seti says, I wish you would have included a huge disclaimer here. Seems there are quite a few misinformed people or techno clowns who think it's actually safe to use Windows XP in 2025. I mean, if you're going to live dangerously like that, why not just install Windows 2000, which doesn't even require online activation? So in this video, I'll be showing you how to install Windows 2000 with all Windows updates using Legacy Update. Alright, jokes aside, this video and this series is meant more for enthusiasts, but this person does have a point, so just keep this in mind. You shouldn't run Windows 2000 or any outdated operating system as your daily driver, and also don't enter any important usernames and passwords on the web using Windows 2000. It's not even the best idea to connect it to the internet unless you know what you're doing, and unless you're behind some sort of router firewall at the very least. This video is for educational and historical purposes only. We'll also be installing all Windows updates using Legacy Update since you can't use the official Windows Update anymore since Microsoft disabled the Windows Update servers for Windows 2000 a long time ago. Keep in mind that this video assumes that you want to install Windows 2000 as the main and only operating system on your computer and will erase anything that is already on your hard drive. All that being said, let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is boot from your installation CD. On most computers, you'll type F11, F12, delete, or escape upon boot to access the boot menu. In the virtual machine that I'm using here today, I'll just hit escape. And I'll use the arrow keys to go down to CD-ROM drive, and I'll hit enter. And press any key to boot from CD. And we'll see the Windows 2000 setup start to load. Alright, now I'm at this screen here. It says to set up Windows 2000 now, press enter. So I'll hit enter. And I'll hit F8 to agree to the license agreement. And we can see that the installer has already detected a copy of Windows on my hard drive. I want to continue with a fresh copy of Windows 2000, so I'm going to press Escape here. And I'm going to delete the existing partition on my disk by making sure it's selected and hitting D on my keyboard. And I'll hit Enter to confirm. And I'll hit L again to confirm here. And if you have more than one partition, you'll want to repeat this process in all the partitions until the only thing you have remaining is unpartitioned space. Again, this is assuming that Windows 2000 is the only operating system you want to have installed once you're done with the process. So the only thing that I have here is unpartitioned space. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to make sure that format the partition using the NTFS file system is selected, and I'll hit enter. And interestingly enough, I think Windows 2000 is actually the first operating system to offer format as NTFS, and to offer NTFS if I'm not mistaken, so that's kind of cool. And on my modern computer, this process goes blazingly fast, and my computer isn't even that modern, it's like 8 years old. Okay, and the computer's going to reboot, I'm just going to hit enter so we don't have to wait. And we see the Windows 2000 boot screen. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite boot screens from Microsoft. But anyways, I'll just wait for this to load until we get to the next part of the setup. Alright, and we've booted into the graphical part of the installer here. I'm just going to click Next. And we see that it's installing devices. Now, I did want to mention that I find Windows 2000 such a fascinating operating system because it didn't come out long before Windows XP. Windows 2000 went to retail in early 2000, and Windows XP went to retail in late 2001, so really less than two years between major releases, which is interesting. Because of this, it never really gained a ton of traction, despite it being the most stable version of Windows that Microsoft has ever released, at least in my opinion, and I think some other enthusiasts' opinions as well. It also set much of the foundation for what was to become Windows XP, being the first really commercially available operating system based on the NT kernel. Yes, Windows NT did exist before this, but mostly in enterprise settings, and Windows 2000 actually did see a decent adoption by small businesses and home users for the adoption that it did get. Windows 2000 also holds a special place in my heart because it's actually the operating system that my second ever computer came with when I was a child. It was a hand-me-down, of course, probably around 2005-2006, I was born in 97, so I wasn't very old, and I'm not much older than this operating system, but I have fond memories of using it as a child, so I think it'll be fun to do this and get it completely up to date. Anyways, this stage seems to be taking a few minutes here, so I'll come back once this is done. Alright, now we're at the regional settings. I'm just going to leave this all on default here and click next. And it's going to ask for your name and organization. I'll just type in my name and I'll click next. And you're forced to enter a product key during the installation for Windows 2000. So I'll just enter that and I'll click next once I'm done. All right, I entered my product key and I clicked next. Now it's asking me for a computer name. I'm just going to type in Win2000VM for this example. 
And it also asks me to make an administrator password, so I'm going to do that, and I'll click Next. Okay, now it's asking me to select my time zone. I'm going to do that here. Now, the menu is really small. I'm in the Eastern time zone. Oh, there we are. And I'll click Next. And we see that Windows is installing networking components. This might take a second, and I'll come back once this is done. And it's asking me if I want to use typical or custom settings. I'm just going to leave it on typical, and I'll click Next. And I'm going to leave the workgroup settings on default as well and click Next. And we see that it's installing some components. So this might take a minute. I'll come back once this is done. OK, and we see that it's performing some final tasks here. And finally, we see this screen here. You have successfully completed Windows 2000 setup. If there is a CD in your CD drive, remove it. So I'm going to do that. And I'll just click Finish. And the computer should reboot. OK, now on the first boot, we see this, the network identification wizard. I'm just going to click Next. And by default, it wants you to always assume the following user has logged on to the computer. You can set a user here. It basically wants you to auto log on to the computer. I'm just going to click users must enter a username and password to use this computer. And I'll click next. And I'll click finish. And that's it. We're at the Windows 2000 login screen. Now, the interesting thing here is that there is no sort of out of box experience like we get with Windows XP forward. So we haven't created a user account yet. We have to log in with the administrator account. So I'm just going to do that here with the password that I set during the installation, and I'll click OK. Now that's nostalgic. The Windows 2000 startup noise is awesome. It was also actually used in Windows ME as well. Maybe I'll do a video on that at some point. But anyways, we see this getting started screen here. I'm just going to uncheck this box, show this startup screen at startup, and I'll click Exit. Now, at this point, you'll want to install your hardware's drivers. Most drivers of the time would have come on CD. Now, since I'm doing this in a virtual machine here, I'm going to go ahead and install the VMware Tools drivers, which should give us graphics drivers and give us a better user experience once I'm done. So I went ahead and inserted the VMware Tools CD, and I'm getting this message here that setup was unable to upgrade the Windows installer, and it won't proceed. So I guess I'm going to be showing you how to install legacy update and install some Windows updates without any graphics drivers at first just until I can get this system up to date enough that VMware tools will install. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open Internet Explorer. And in Windows 2000, the first time you open Internet Explorer, you'll get this Internet Connection Wizard here. For most networks these days, you'll want to select LAN or this last option here. And I'll just click Next. And on this screen, you want to click I Connect Through a Local Area Network. And I'll click Next. And I'll just leave everything else on default. I'm going to select No here. Do you want to set up an internet mail account now? I'll click No, and I'll click Next. And I'll just click Finish. And of course, the default home page doesn't load, but I should be able to go to legacyupdate.net here. All right, and it looks awful since we don't have any drivers installed, but it does load at least. So I'm going to scroll down here until we get to Install Legacy Update. And we're just going to click that. And we get this really old school looking file download box. I'm going to select run this program from its current location and I'll click OK. And I'll just click yes on this security warning. I'm going to leave everything on default here and I'm just going to click install. Now what I'm hoping is that the initial run of legacy update updates the system enough that we can install the drivers and at least get a slightly better experience here. But I'm going to let this run and I'm going to let it reboot. And then once it's done, I'm going to try installing the VMware Tools drivers again and see if it works. All right, the system's rebooted. I'm back at the login screen, so I'll log in. And we're in a minimal shell here. It looks like it's installing Service Pack 4, which is a good sign. I'm just going to let this go. It might reboot a couple times, but I'm going to keep doing this until I can make it back to the desktop so we can try installing VMware Tools again. All right, Legacy Update has rebooted a couple times, but I finally made it back to the desktop, and it looks like the VMware Tools setup does load now, so I'm going to install these drivers, and hopefully we can get a better graphical experience once I'm done with this. Okay, and I'm back on the Windows 2000 login screen in full 1080p HD now. It looks like the VMware Tools drivers did install correctly, so I'm just going to log back in. And we can see now that we have higher quality icons and everything, so our drivers are working. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep updating the system using legacy update. So if I click start, I can open legacy update from there. And I'm just going to let it check for the latest updates for the computer. Okay, so it looks like Windows Update wants to update Windows Update to continue. So I guess I'll just click download and install now. And I'll just wait for this and I'll check for updates again. All right, and it's saying that I have to restart. So I'll do that and I'll check for updates again once I'm done. All right, my computer's restarted. We can see that I have a bunch of updates to install. So I'm going to make sure that everything is selected. Uh, we also have these optional ones down here, which I'm going to select. They all look like they could be applicable. And I also have these ones at the very top here that say they must be installed separately. I'm just going to install all the ones that are selected down here first by clicking review and install updates and by clicking install updates again. And we'll see Windows Update open. Now it looks like there's 96 updates to install, so this might take a while. I'll just let it do its thing and I'll come back once it's done. All right, now I've gone through the process of installing updates from Legacy Update and rebooting several times. And now when I check for updates, the only one that I have left is this DirectX 9.0C update up here. It seems to be stuck. I have installed it several times and it says that it's installed correctly, but it keeps showing up in here. So I think we're just gonna have to live with it. So other than this, the system is completely up to date. Now, the last thing that we should do on our Windows 2000 system is create a separate user account to use other than the administrator account. So what I'm going to do is I'll click Start, and I'll go to Settings, and I'll click Control Panel, and I'll go to Users and Passwords, and I'm just going to click Add, and it's going to ask for your username, as well as your full name, and I'll just click Next. I'll create a password, and I'll click Next. And for most users, they'll probably want to leave this on Standard User. You can add the account to the administrators group, but this will allow the user to see other people's files. So if you want them to only be able to see their own files, but still install programs, you can just choose standard user here and I'll just click finish. And that should be it. I've created a new user account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out. Now it looks like we don't have a logout option. I'm going to click shut down and we see we have an option to log off administrator. I'm going to do that. And it should let me sign in with my new username and password. And there we go, we've installed Windows 2000, we've installed all possible Windows updates, and we've created a user account to use other than the administrator account. Now one thing that I did want to make note of is that Windows 2000 had almost no bloat, which I really liked about it, and I know other people really liked about it. I mean, if we check out the start menu, we don't even have MSN services installed by default. It's just basically all the basic Windows applications and there's basically nothing extra. Now, looking back, Windows XP was also pretty good in terms of bloat. Really, the only bloat you had installed was the MSN services, but it's interesting to see there was basically no bloat in this operating system and it was just designed to do what it was supposed to do. And that's it. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If there's a legacy operating system you want to see me install and explain, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And don't forget to check out my website at www.techop.io for more.